Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to the weekly movie show with the boy Connor. Hello. And Benny. Hello. He's back. Welcome back, Connor. He's returned. Hi, hi. Hello. How are you feeling then? How's the trip? Uh, Trip was good. Back to the motherland. Yep. Back on Australian uh, turf. Good stuff. Little I was trip saying over. I went back to the motherland. Oh, he went back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. But back also that, Canada. I suppose, either way, because we realized that I've, I'm coming up to next year will be my half and half, where I will have spent half my life in Canada and wow. half my life in Australia. Oh, cool. Then you have to make a decision. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty clear cut. I'll oh, let you decide which it is. Glad the trip went well, friendo. We missed you a ton, particularly with the Aquaman review. I, yeah, we'll get into that. So let's so catch what, up on what everyone's been watching. Yeah. No, 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 I'm going to let you guys go first because what what I think we should do is I'm going to go through a bunch of the movies that I watched while I was over there. And by over there, I mean on the plane over <clears> there. <throat> and then I'll finish off with Aquaman and then we can kind of launch into a bit of a discussion around that. So, Okay, cool. George, um, why don't you go first? I mean, we prepared for you to go first. So, uh, <laughs> we discussed this. Shit, we, uh, we, we, who, we. Yeah. I <laughs> asked you just you? then. I just asked you then when we started. Well, I, I was like, wasn't you listening. first? <laughs> yeah, clearly. It's <laughs> like with your yeah, hat. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That works for me. All yeah. right. Um, let me uh, Is it you search the memory anything? banks. No, um, I watched half of Justice League. Why? So, oh, I remember you. you wait. Who not not to cut you off, I watched it as well um, with a, a commentary from a podcast I love. So okay. not proper watching, but uh, whoa, yeah. Whoa. Go, yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. Like that that first scene where Superman comes up, Henry Cavill and his the mouth is moving The first shot everywhere. of the film. Literally <laughs> the first shot of the so film. So jarring. And then, <laughs> and then it moves into Batman in Gotham with whoa. the parademon. And it's literally like a cartoon. Like he's, he holds on to the parademon, the parademon goes flying off and they're flying around Gotham. And they land and back then, on the same roof. And they land straight back down on the exact same roof. On, oh, <laughs> sorry, roof. Terrible set. Yeah. Uh, I feel <laughs> yeah, like yeah. those two Was scenes really <laughs> encapsulate Justice League, and then as well I, early on the the, the Themyscira scene, um, yeah, is one of the. I actually texted you guys while watching. It. It's like one of the worst things I've ever seen so, on on in a but big I, film. I, I distinctly remember being in the cinema and just like I just remember the 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 feeling of thinking, "What the fuck is going on here?" Like I just it, it was kind of disbelief at this point. I was like, "There's no way that that it's this bad this soon into the film." Mm. I saw it a few weeks before release, and I honestly couldn't wait to go on opening day just to see it with you guys and watch your reactions. Oh. I remember I was looking at you when Henry Cavill first popped up, and you were both just like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I, I, what? I, I, what? what? Something's weird about You're pranking this. us like, somehow? <laughs> yeah. So that was decidedly ah, odd. Yeah, it was crazy. Decidedly odd. Um, what made you. Ash chucked it on, and I just kind of was like, oh, I guess I'm going to sort of zone in and out of this. And have, you, you have you filed the divorce papers yet? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well I mean. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I also watched The Founder with uh, Michael Keaton, the yeah. uh, okay. biopic. The McDonald's Yeah, the McDonald's, one, right? yeah. yeah. Um, Ray Kroc. Well, I, I really enjoyed this. Good and stuff. I think um, compared to a lot of other biopics, um, the performance really shone through. Yeah, he created a real character out of this, whereas mo- most people, it's just imitation or something. It was very easy to watch. I loved, um, I loved his progression of... Uh, the character and where it goes. Mm. Uh, initially, you're on his side, and then it kind of evolves, and it's uh, it's just really, really solid film to chuck yeah. on for Netflix. And it's an interesting story, not like really kind of on its own. So fascinating story about yeah. how he saw the vision of these guys and they scaled it. Um, and kind of amazing how it was allowed to be made, given you know one of the, what the top three biggest brands in the world. Yeah, um, and it just. They somehow were able to do it with full-on McDonald's. And it seemed to kind of it and p- fly under the radar a little bit. I don't think this is sort of talked about in Michael Keaton. I think I, of, it, there was a bit of a wards buzz at first. I don't think it ended up getting, no. uh, go, going anywhere. Sort of that be, come yeah. and gone pretty quick. I, yeah. the, I mean, I think I saw a little bit of it on a on the media campaign, and then and then the real kind of push for me was I, I heard about it from word of mouth, mm. um, which is I think where it got most of its nice kind of. Um, uh, and I watched something else, but it is escaping me right now. So I'm going to flick it over to you, to Benny, ben. and uh, I'm going to re- try and remember. Cool. I checked out a... I, so what I did uh, a couple of weeks ago was I wrote up a, a list of all of the um, most kind of interesting or talked about or just any particular thing stood out to me, movies of the past 
five years or so that I, I haven't seen. Nice. Um, you know those ones that you always hear coming out of Fantastic Fest or South by Southwest. You're like, I want to check that out. Then it never gets an Australian release. It doesn't show up on Netflix. You just don't see it. Yep. Um, so I just went through like all of my top favorite reviewers, like top tens of the past bunch of years. And Anyway, so I wrote a, a list of like 60 movies that I've been meaning to check out. Wow. Um, so I guess that's a New Year's resolution. Yeah, there I'll be we talking go. about these every week. Um, so I chucked a couple on this week. I um, watched... Uh, Murder Party, which just happened to be on Netflix, um, notable for being uh, David Solnier's first film, the director mm-hmm. of Green Room and uh, Hold the Dark. Um, very, very uh, first film, like looked like it had a budget of zero dollars, um, but some really, uh, really clear talent shining through. Like uh, it's amazingly shot and uh, tonally it's just, it's this really goofy movie that Turns incredibly violent at points. Uh, pretty funny. Um, if you go into watching the context of like, this is someone who's got out of film school, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Yeah, nice. Um, and I also checked out a very strange one, really hard to kind of uh, pin down, like even what genre it is. Uh, Personal Shopper, starring uh, Kristen Stewart. Um, I hadn't heard of this film at all. Hmm. Uh, you guys probably haven't. No. Um, it's It's a weird like uh, drama, mystery, thriller horror in in parts as well but not like overall it's like individual parts are all they all feel like different genres um really interesting movie okay um i, I feel like a lot of people would come out of it and absolutely hate it but right. but i i found it um i managed to stay awake <laughs> it's, it's a bit <laughs> slow and drawn out but um it was yeah, really interesting and well worth a watch uh if you're looking for something a bit more experimental nice yeah um and uh i also <laughs> watched all or some of uh uh, Thor, Ant Man, Avengers One, and Avengers Two. Uh, so <laughs> a bit of a bit of a Marvel week. Okay, cool. uh, they've just been playing in my house. Um, so that's what's been fun. Yeah, nice, nice. One. nice. Uh, I, I watched Gone Girl. Fuck uh, yes, fuck Not, man. For the first time or nah, third, <laughs> third or fourth? Okay, yeah. masterpiece. Uh, <clears throat> maybe maybe even movie. the fifth. Holy crap! I think I got it even more this time. Like I really got the structure a little bit more and um, the themes in this, it's so dense. It talks about the media. It talks about re- modern relationships. It talks about power so many things, and- power dynamics. Um, I reckon that might be possibly the best uh, like quasi blockbuster of the past like five years, like in terms of something that scale um, and that did that well, that, that's fucking, um, that movie is so good. It is mm. just uh, like I feel like there's not an ounce of fat on that movie. No. Uh, it is so Which beautifully is, put together. It's really impressive because it's not a short movie. No, it's about two twenty. Yeah, two thirty. So, I mean, like, to have a movie that feels cut down but is actually that long is really like that's a feat. Yeah, and then I went on this whole Trent Reznor tirade where I was just listening yeah. to all these interviews, him talking about the process of scoring Gone Girl, and uh, just love hearing about him working with David Fincher and. Uh, all those kind of things. I think because we were talking about this in the Bird Box review. Mm. Um, mm. Go check that out, guys. Uh, they scored, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross scored that mm. and it didn't sound characteristic of them. Uh, so that kind of prompted me to go watch Gone Girl. But yeah, had a fantastic time. Highly recommend it. Mm. One of the all-time greats, I think. How about you, Connor? Give us your list. All right, here we go. Da, All right, da, 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 caught da, up on a couple that uh, I think that were a long time coming. And then there's a, a couple of other ones that were ones that uh, I wouldn't have probably gone out of my way to see, but they were there. So I went and checked them out. Mm-hmm. One of the things I did do is I, and I'll get this out of the way first, is I rewatched Deadpool 2, um, which is something that I wasn't sure I was going to do. Having done that, um, I think that it's, I, I can't remember how we kind of left the review. I feel like we were fairly harsh on it. Um, I think we're sort of middling. Middling, yeah. And I, I think I, we were more positive, and then as time has gone on, sort of my review has sort of gone down a little bit. It's very rewatchable, is mm-hmm. what I'll say about that. There, there is still the same problems that were there when we reviewed it. I mean, for anyone that's interested, go check that out. Um, but it's, it is very rewatchable because there's a lot of good scenes in that 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 I think hold up to uh, the the test of time. Um, so th- I'll leave that there. Um, one of the more important ones that I did watch was Black Klansman. Finally, nice. Really impressed with that film. Um, it was, for Spike Lee, an incredibly subtle film. <laughs> um, I will say for Spike Lee, because uh, I didn't feel like things were being like really shoved down my throat. Um, although some of the connections were um, om- not too poignant, but they were getting there. Um, kind of like those moments where someone would say something and then everyone just stops and like 
turns to the screen, breaks the fourth wall, and be like, eh? It's like, what's well, set in the 70s, and there are literal scenes where they pretty much are like, fuck Trump. <laughs> yeah, fuck pretty Trump. much, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you get what we're doing here? Do, do you get it? Um, but I mean, that, it didn't really... Um, it didn't really bother me because I tend to agree with some Fuck of the pol- like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it's, you know, I, I wasn't egregiously offended, but there would be a lot of people that would watch that that would probably, they probably wouldn't watch it to begin with, I'll be honest. Spike <laughs> yeah. Lee called Black yeah. Klansman. Yeah. M- maybe uh, some people that- Unless they were seriously confused about <laughs> Do you think that would have made your top about? 10? Um, I'd have to think year? about what my top 10, I almost forgot what my top 10 were. It might have, yeah. I think that- Didn't you have like Rampage in your top 10? Surely you could bump that out. If uh, I, I no, I, I, it, you know, I didn't have it in my top ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honorable mention, I believe. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, it would have been. It would have been probably fairly close if cool. not in the top ten. Yeah. Um, nice. So, Black Klansman. I watched Mile Twenty Two, which is that um, uh, Mark Wahlberg film. Mm. Um, I was very meh about it. I everyone were, else was too. I think there were some cool concepts, but altogether a very poorly put together film. Mm, um, one of those shame. films that that was a bit jarring in the way that it provided context and and just kind of plot conflict and things like that. Is that like um, a Peter Berg? Yeah, movie? Peter I'm, Berg. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh um, boy, Peter! It's just fucking Mark Wahlberg action movie. It's got to be yeah. a Peter Berg one. Um, I like the, yeah, I like the premise of that. Shame it's not. What terrific. was the premise? It, well, the the premise from the 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 uh, what I thought it was going into it was that there was an agent that had defected. Um, and that they had to basically, it was basically get from point A to point B yeah. action film, which, you know, it, it was. And if you like gunfights, then, you know, it's pretty good. Um, and it's, you know, fairly non-relenting with, with the way that it portrays that um, in, in a lot of ways. And I think it's pretty accurate in the way that it portrays um, some of the uh, pros and cons of the, Pros and cons is the wrong word, but I can't think of it. Like some of the the pitfalls and the, and the kind of real world behind the curtains of um, service people that mm-hmm. that are in that kind of environment. Sure, um, as vague as I can say that. Did uh, you know it's just but on, very meh. on a very on a tangent? Did you guys know that Trent Reznor has worked with um, Peter Berg on that? Um, what was that one? Deep Water or so Dark Water or I, Deep Water Horizon? Yeah. Is it Deep Water Horizon? I, I yeah, they scored that. I haven't watched hell? it, but I've heard from a number of people that that is a surprisingly good oh. and like emotionally em, emotionally rich film. Okay, which completely took me off guard, but um, but wouldn't surprise me because didn't Peter Berg do Lone Survivor as well? Possibly. Let me check it out. That, it was a Mark Wahlberg action. Didn't film, he so do can, Battleship? <laughs> He did. Oh, did he? That's that's Fuck confirmed. Peter Berg. I, I, you know, for the I, I, I hate that duo for the simple reason. Yeah, that they he did do Lone to, Survivor. They seem to like capitalize on American tragedy and that fucking. I, I don't like that that style of patriotism. It just kind of weirds mm. me out. Mm. Um, but uh, but Lone Survivor was really good, so nice. it wouldn't surprise me that Deepwater Horizon would actually also be good. So. Okay. Anyways, Mile Twenty Two, very meh. Um, I also watched Crazy Rich Asians. Cool. Um, a lot of hype around this film. Um, it was, I mean, I, I don't know what I expected going in. Mm. It was, it was a perfectly acceptable rom com. Yeah, just with Asian people in it. Like that was pretty um, much. Really enjoyed the um, the comic relief, and I, I can't remember her name to save my life. Aquafina. Sure, she is hilarious. She's the, brilliant in this. The friend, yeah, 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 yeah. the friend. Yeah. So good. Mm. Every scene that she was in, I was, on I was so on board. She's with. cast in uh, Jungle Book Two. Oh yeah, Jungle cool. Book, Jumanji, Jumanji, Jumanji yeah, okay. too. Um, very shit. much a fan of <laughs> Mowgli uh, Free. <laughs> um, I also watched Equalizer Two, um, mm-hmm. which uh, I thought was again a lot better than I thought it had any right to be. Which is very much how I felt about the first one. Um, it was in all the ways that I thought it would be incredibly ridiculous and bad. But uh, I felt like that was an advantage going in, knowing that that was going to happen. Like the whole lift thing was so fucking silly. Mm. But you know, it was an entertaining film. It's fun. It's way too long, I think. But yeah. So I, I think the first one was tighter. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I do like you know the end when he turns into the fucking Terminator. Like that's yeah, that's no, it's, cool. it's always good, right? Yeah. Um, I also watched Bad Times at the El Royale. Missed that one. Yeah. Um, it's. It's a good film, I think. 
Um, Less than the sum of its parts is how I came away from that one. That would probably be the best way the to describe it. The flip of yeah. uh, Cabin in the Woods, which well, I think was more than the sum of some its of, parts exactly, somehow. Exactly yeah. like that. It's just there's all these like individual little stories that you thought, oh, these are cool or that you got something out of it, each individual one. But as a whole, when it's finished, you're kind of like, huh. Well, that was it. All right. all right. I guess that's where we're going to finish that off. Hemsworth is great. He, I mean, he's always he was great. really terrific. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed him in this. Mm. And also, uh, have you seen Widows? No, no, not yet. Oh, well, then this is annoying because each of you have seen one of the movies I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just the, the singer in Bad Times at El Royale was also oh, yeah, the, yeah. Um, the late addition to the team in Widows. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she's, she's really good. Unrecognizable from okay. film to film. Okay, cool. in, in one, she just plays a soul singer in a really beautiful emotional performance. In the other, she plays an absolute badass, some of the biggest muscles I've ever seen on film. <laughs> um, it's It blew my mind when I found out the same person. Anyway, yeah, right, yeah. Wow. Good Transformative. Yeah. Okay, got that one. Um, I also watched The Meg. Okay. I don't know if either of you had, no, had a chance I've to dial that, that in. It's a yeah. Megalodon. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch that, Ben? No. <laughs> um, I actually kind of recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Most people were really into it. I yeah, I mean, it. If you went Execute into that movie, well, yeah. Right? If you went into that movie and expected anything other than what it was, then that is completely on you. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it's it's surprisingly good looking for what you know. I, I don't even know what the budget on that. It must have been. Let's have a look. Pretty serious. I think what most people got caught up on was the fact that uh, they they turned down the violence so substantially. Like even the director was pretty pissed about that. I think. Mm. Uh, I can see that there would have definitely been room to. Um, to add a little bit more kind of gore and that in that style of film for sure. Mm. Um, One thirty million. One hundred thirty million. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. Check. Well, that makes sense. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because um, I mean, this thing looked really good. Story Do you know what it made? Five hundred thirty million. Yeah. Five hundred thirty million. One hundred thirty million and one dollar. <laughs> yeah. Five thirty. Five thirty. It's good. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Look, it's it's a thoroughly enjoyable film. Like there's like. Um, yeah, I recommend. I reckon I'll enjoy that one. In. You will. Yeah. yeah. Um, and finally, um, much to my disappointment, I tried watching Teen Titans mm-hmm. go to the movies. Mm. Um, Didn't you already watch that? No, Ben watched that and then and recommended. It, <laughs> no, recommended I swear it to, to God, you watched that. No, it's Titans or Teen Titans? Teen Titans go to the, go movies. To the movies. I am tripping out right now. You I are. swear to God, He's definitely you've watched this. Now. I mean, I don't okay, want to speak for not. you, Connor, but I don't think okay, you've watched Okay, my it. bad. My bad. <laughs> I, also, I also, I mean, while we're at it, I also watched the first half of uh, Attack on Titan, but <laughs> um, at any rate, uh, the I, tr- I tried, and I don't know whether it was just the mood I was in, but I got really tight. Like, it was just too childish. I don't know what I went mm. in expecting, <laughs> but the way that you described it made me think that I was just going to be laughing out loud, and it was a lot of, like, fart jokes, which I guess was the whole point of it, mm. is that it is really childish humor, but... Um, I think that it just wasn't quite to the point where I was like actually enjoying it. Mm. Um, I just kept waiting for it to get good. And then like halfway through, I was like, I can't do this. I, I, I described it as sort of like a bump episode of Powerpuff Girls or... Did, Des- did you watch Des- it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, I enjoyed all the way it. Through? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I found it... Um, but I didn't, I didn't like it as much as Benny. Mm. But I, 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 that nostalgia that I have from watching those Cartoon Network... Yeah. F- you know, things from the nineties sort of, and maybe, I don't know that, that helped me get through maybe it. Maybe if or, I'd been in that mind space, but like, my, yeah. Um, headspace. Mind space? Yeah. Mind space. It's our new uh, social media. Um, but yeah, this was just, I, I don't know. It just, it kind of annoyed me. It's, and then I just turned it off. Um, yeah. So that's, I, I saw I two minutes of uh, maniac. It was uh, Justin Theroux getting jerked off by a machine. So that was huh. fun. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good week, man. Um, That's a really good that week. Was, it definitely sold me on the show. Yeah. I won't be coming back. <laughs> um <laughs> That's called a that's and, called a segue from Teen and Titans. Finally, <laughs> uh we have Aquaman. Um so I, I watched Aquaman actually last night and then I uh listened to your guys' review um last night and t- uh, today. Um and I'm just going to go right off the bat and say I'm not – I don't hate this film. Nice. So I'm not coming Uh-oh. against you like – I'm not – I don't hate what film. I just hate you too. <laughs> what happened in really Canada, bro? I hate you. Um, <laughs> He's got all zen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be drawn into this conflict <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. anymore. <laughs> I love all things equally. 
Um, <laughs> the <laughs> but you two were were very very lenient on this film, and I think that that was almost too lenient. Although I understand, I, I'm I'm so back and forth on this. I understand why because when I think back on it, the 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 mo- the things that were good about this film were so good that I'm like, that's what really jumps out at me. Mm. Um, I think that and a couple. Other I things. find if we go and see a movie and we go and do a review straight away, I will probably be more lenient. Mm. If it waits a couple more days, it'll be more of a measured yeah. I feel like approach. the movie might still be listening. And you, yeah, you yeah. Like James Bond, I love you. I also just watched it last night. So, I mean, like, I'm not suffering yeah, from fair. that. If, if I'm going downhill from here, it's probably not going to be good. Hmm. But, um, but your, your second viewing of it, Benny, dra- dragged dropped. a little more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I was drinking for that one, so. Um, I will say whoever wrote the dialogue for that film should be shot. Um, that is Oof. some pretty <laughs> clunky dialogue. Like that's, I mean, no, not good. There's a there's a lot of lines that just. Well, well I'm not I mean, going. I'm not going to an Aquaman movie for like you know a Coen Brothers. But see, this is the script, thing. you know. So, the, and this is one of the things that you guys mentioned in your review, and I I half agree with in that there's um, levels of entertainment in a film, and there's good films, and we talk about this all the time. But I think I don't think that you have to sacrifice one for the other. You can have both. Um, and I think that it needs to be kind of ranked accordingly. So this was a movie that was was entertaining, but had a lot of things that really undercut that entertainment. Um, and and there's a lot of things that this movie could have done very easily that wouldn't have sacrificed that entertainment, that would have made it a better film. Um, and I think that if there had been a little bit more care and attention to the way that the um, you just some of the scenes and some of the clunkiness of the dialogue and some of the clunkiness of like the plot mechanics had been just ironed out a little bit. I think that this movie could have really just kind of bumped itself up. And it's a, a lot of the same issues that I had with um, with Wonder Woman, which was that this was at its core a really cool movie, but there were little things that they should have been able to fix that would have really just gone gone miles yeah, it's like when you when you see good film. when they're working at the top of the game it's like why is the rest of this happening like well exactly how, how did the same film that have this bit have this yeah bit? and i mean that this this is a film that um <clears throat> that visually is is some of some of the best visuals that i've seen in terms of design not according to the oscars <laughs> and he got pissed off that he got snubbed on that which i think it's is a fucking fair. disgrace yeah totally. i think it's completely fair totally. Like, do you how- see some of, the, some of the other shortlisted films in there no i, I didn't even it look. was like uh, no fucking uh, a look um marwin is in there that new Are steve you fucking kidding me? Marwin is in there that new robert zemeckis one that Zemeckis literally everyone is hates. in the back pockets of all the oscar <laughs> yeah. board Who else is in there? welcome whatnot. to marwin there's a couple other ones that um, just aren't VFX, even special effects oscars. films um, no, 2018. And it's not, I'm not to say they did a bad job, yeah. but the scale of this surely I mean, has got to count for I don't think that this I mean, movie should be disqualified. Because, like, it wasn't perfect all the way through. Although I, I think that the facial, rec- or not recognition, the facial de-aging, I was a lot more lenient on that than I think you guys were. I feel like um, if, if Black Panther's in there, this should be in there. Oh, I mean, easily. And Black Panther is in there. All three Marvel movies from this Black year Black Panther are. should not be in there for a special effects. All right, here we I mean, go. Visual effects. So- Ant-Man and the Wasp, Infinity War. Black Panther, Christopher Robin, yeah. First oh, Man, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Mary Poppins Returns, Ready Player One, Ugh! Solo, A Star Wars Tale, and Welcome to Marvel. Okay, so the, the only two that matter are Infinity War and Solo, I think. Yep. To and, me, and those if, qualify for I'll be sure. Also, First Man was pretty If Infinity so. War doesn't win, then that's a crock of shit because that, that movie, effects wise, yeah, was should like be. flawless. Should be. Um, I think Solo is some of the best ever committed to screen, though, yeah, as well. I, agree. But in, in I this be film, with that. and that movie could use one thing. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, thought that, I thought this film was really good. Like, there was just, there was like, little moment, with a hair underwater, I thought that was really impressive, but there were little moments where I was like, well, that's weird. Particularly with Momoa's beard, hmm. that, that, there were moments that, that wigged me His moustache is so long. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think that that's meant to move like that. <laughs> don't do that again. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He's just gonna do this. I was like, no, no. Um, really love the relationship between him and his dad. Um, mm. I and this is what kind of pissed me off about the movie. There were genuinely good emotional like moments in this film that I thought thought were like just generally squandered by the clunky editing and the the kind of the, the plot mechanics that got in the way of that. I think again, it, it's one of those cases of something that was so close to being really amazing that the the um, inadequacies kind of stick out like a sore thumb in that sense. 
I'm the opposite. I feel like the good stuff um, sort of smears and and puts the yeah. those bad things to the background uh, because I feel like it's a very fast paced film. Um, whenever something bad happens, you're pretty quickly on to something the fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of gets away with it. I will say the structure of it is still something that sticks in my head, like the plot mechanics. I, I'm with you there. It's, yeah. um, either, you know, they do the Indiana Jones bit. They do the, yeah, it's kind yeah. of a little bit all over the place, but it holds together quite nicely. Um, and I think the box office reflects oh, how well, they're amazing. They're close to a billion, aren't they? We're above they're gonna, they've, they've eclipsed they Justice it. League's whole box office run in three weeks. Good. So I, th- I think a way of contextualizing this film, and I don't disagree with anything you said, but just a way of making your own experience of it work a bit better is to come at it as I think how I did subconsciously, which is thinking this is a Fast and Furious film set in the DC EU. Totally. Mm-hmm. So un- under that criteria, it's like, yeah, this is big and dumb and fun, and it's better than most of the other ones that have come before. Like if you're if you're watching it, comparing it to those other fucking movies, you're like, this could be worse. <laughs> I yeah. could be watching Justice League right yeah. now. <laughs> um, so yeah, completely. Any criticism of Aquaman is completely valid because Lord knows there's any number of angles you can take on it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I won't be rushing back to see it again, maybe ever. But uh, I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed would, it. A bit. I'm actually keen to see it again. Just for the good parts, but I, I'm mm. worried that when I do, I'll run into the same problem that you've run into, which is that the the bad parts will lag, and I'll suddenly kind of go like, "Oh, is this worth the the overall experience?" Um, I will say one thing that you guys didn't mention, and that I I thought was pretty funny, and I don't know whether they did this intentionally at all, but um, uh, the uh, old mate Kiwi actor, uh, Tamara Morrison, yeah, he has a line at the beginning which was, I was just going to cook you some eggs. Um, and I had a, like a laugh out loud moment because he's, he's very famous for being in an old Kiwi film called We Once Were Warriors, where one of his more notable lines is, cook the man some fucking eggs. Mm. Um, so I had a good laugh at that. As I don't know whether they did it's that intentionally a joke, right? as mm. a throwback. Um, that's or, cool. I like yeah. those little references. Yeah, yeah. Or if that's just, it was just a coincidence. Either way, it's brilliant. Um, his but, accent was so it was so weird, wasn't it? Terrible. Although, to be honest, I, I kind of, when I thought about it, um, it would make sense for a Kiwi to be living in the States to have this kind of weird hybrid accent. Totally. That's how I always actually look at bad accents in films. I'm just like, I'm just like people have weird accents. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, like, but my still, accent it's, is it's not still Canadian. Yeah, it's fucked not, up, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's not Canadian. It's still not Australian. Like, there's a, just and it's a, a little bit Irish. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. So I'm told. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I was going to mention is Amber Heard. Um, I cannot state how how much I do not like Amber Heard. Um, I just don't think... I, I, maybe it's just I haven't seen the right films that she's in, but I don't think she's a talented actor at all. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah, and in this, it's it's no different. I found the relationship between those two very strained. I didn't like the dialogue between them. It made zero... Like, her just appearing out of the, the water like that, I was just... I was like, eh, nah, this is weird. I don't I like it. almost round the board, the casting, especially when you compare to the MCU, the casting of the DCAU is just really average. Apart from Momoa, who I think is a brilliant I, cast no, as I, I don't think that either. I think he's just playing Momoa, and he's incredibly charming. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a good Which is get. what I mean by it. He's, like, a good, yeah. he's a good stream presence, but I mean, as casting for Aquaman in one of these things. Mm. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man, because um, I was a little bit worried... Uh, that you were maybe going to have a bit of a Venom sort of... Um, I think this, this is... This is better than Venom. This is, ven- this is better, than, better Venom, than Venom, for sure. Uh, and I really look forward to watching it again. I think I like it the most out of everyone here. Mm. Uh, I've got a soft spot for it for some reason. Mm. Uh, I'm really, really keen to watch it again. I think... I think Because it was watch a two-hour plus movie that didn't make you want to claw your yeah. eyes out. And you're <laughs> like, it's Can a miracle. It? <laughs> Gone Girl, Aquaman, this has been a crazy week. I, I, would, I would probably put money on the fact that if you watch it again, those moments that... For sure will drag yes never watch it on netflix or anything why <laughs> watch well, it on I, watch it on the biggest screen possible yeah. <laughs> don't watch it on tv you'll be like and don't, don't oh. watch it here what about the soundtrack i thought the soundtrack was one of the yeah the sound well, don't 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 you. fucking watch it here because you won't be able to hear the soundtrack <laughs> what did you think of the soundtrack i thought that was one of the strongest elements of i really that. i really I loved liked it. the soundtrack i really mm. liked it and i liked the sound design as well mm. um there was a moment when they were doing that chase scene um over the tops of italy or whatever wherever they were um that was there was a bit of a generic like I can't even think of the noise, but it's like that wah 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 uh, 
noise. That's a dumb that's, step. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a pretty generic. Like, was, I just I felt I like think that it's was a kind pitbull of a, song you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, that annoyed me a little bit, but um, and this kind of slides into one of the one of the coolest scenes of this film. Again, I can't do bloody spoilers. I shouldn't be talking about this film at all. Um, <laughs> uh, is uh, all I will say is the trench scene. Mm. Oh. Damn. I reckon that movie from Sicily onwards is a complete blast. Oh, like, my it's, God. It's, that, that, that once scene in particular. Once like, there's nothing bad about that. <sighs> the rest of the film that hasn't already been established is bad from yeah. the get-go. So, yeah, I reckon that whole chunk of it is fantastic. Yeah. yeah no, that's a killer that's movie, half, man. That's half the movie. That's a killer movie. That's the best movie of 2019. Yeah. Well, and, again, and again, this is where I'm going to stop it. Like, <laughs> the moments, the moments are just moments so good. Moments are so good. And but the, the, broader there's also average moments brings, like, the broader average brings it down, but the moments yeah. are fantastic. I just, I think for me, this movie is about missed opportunity. Like where I, when I think about it, it was like, ah, there's so much. I think it's it. about course correction. And do you think mm. this is, oh, yeah. is this your number one DCEU film? See, I, I'm not nearly as hard on Man of Steel as the two of you. Yeah, but have you watched um, it recently? When was the last time you watched <laughs> you always it? Say that. Like, I'm, no, I'm not either. I, 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 that's, I that's the only like competition for me. Let's you, do one. Let's do a sc- let's do a screening. It's not too long let's though. Let's do because um, I'd be down to see where everyone's at now with um, uh, where the DCU's yeah at and whatnot. Just because it's more fresh in my memory, this might be better. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Man of Steel is still the most legitimate film, I think, in the DCEU. Yeah, probably. It has the best trailer, so. Oh, yeah, best trailer ever made. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get into the news. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. That was a long one. That's been our Ackerman review again. Boom. You are going to have a hell of a time combing through that to see what you need to add <laughs> for spoilers. No, it's all right. <laughs> no, everyone should, should be right. Beep. Should be a lot right. of money. Um, anyway, first up, uh, I wanted to segue from this a second ago, but we had a little more chat. Um, Sony is officially moving ahead with Venom 2. Shock. Horror. Um, Can you believe it? One of the best ROI films of 2018. They're going ahead with a sequel. Fifth I mean, highest grossing film of 2018. Crazy. Yeah, so we all knew this, but uh, now now we know for sure. And uh, just a note, Kelly Marcel, one of the screenwriters from the first movie, is uh, going to write it. Um, and so, Fleisch is not potentially coming back at this stage. No, yeah, no word no on, news. on yeah. his involvement. So my main concern <sighs> with this um, is that I feel like Venom was a bit of a fluke. Um, in terms of, like, I don't think it was a good film. Um, Agreed. But I think the good things about this film were not intentional. Um, and I think that um, if they just put this on Tom Hardy, that it's not really going to work. Um, so I think, this, I think this is probably, ironically, the worst thing that Sony can do is, I mean, it, it was inevitable that it was going to happen, but I just, I feel like this will be the downfall of Venom. Um, Prove me well, the wrong, other, Sony. The other option is just not to make one. So I, this, I mean, that would also be the downfall. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I don't think it'll be the downfall of Venom um, necessarily. Just on on that that criteria, um, I, I, it's a it's it makes complete sense that they're going ahead with this. I think to. it's a good move. Um, it'd be interesting to see where they go with this and what kind of angle they'll take because they had a very definitive through line with Venom 1 and they really rested on, you know, you know, Tom Hardy's shoulders and him integ- and you know, the Eddie Brock character integrating with Venom. That's kind of like the origin story. How will it go with where where can they go with Venom 2? What can they explore? I mean, you got Harrelson's Carnage. <laughs> you got Carnage. That's I mean, yeah, but you know, that post credit scene um, I'm just remembering it now, that wig, far Woody out. Woody Harrelson's wig is the worst film of 2018. <laughs> it's like a Ronald McDonald wig, wasn't it? <laughs> it looks like Pippi Longstocking. It's so <laughs> fucking, it's fucking weird. bizarre is what it was. <laughs> so hopefully they give, they trim him down, make him look a little bit more badass. Yeah. And uh, if we get a Venom Carnage, hey, you know, potential for some good stuff here. Potential. I will say. So... I mean, there's always potential for a movie to be good. Oh, there's always potential for a movie to be bad. Yeah, so that's I mean, yeah. like what I'm saying is that's not saying much. I think it will more than likely be bad. Yeah, I'm 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 on record as saying I think the good parts of Venom, Sorry, Sorry. <laughs> the good parts of Venom, such as they were, felt very intentional to me. It felt like they slipped through the studio system. Like it felt like the studio wanted to crush that movie into something completely different. But um, I think the the some of the creatives involved at least had an interesting idea of what to do with that movie. And hopefully, hopefully uh, the writer who's staying on is is one of them. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Flash to come back either. I think he's he's got some talent when he's uh, allowed to kind of work like Zombieland. Um, 
And I will happily sit down to watch two hours of just Tom Hardy being a fucking nutcase again. I feel I like... I would watch that without Venom <clears throat> in it. I feel like Venom and um, Aquaman are almost like stepping stones for both the DCEU and the Sumk. Mm-hmm. Um, they're almost like... Aquaman in a lot of ways is almost like test and learn. Like let's throw as much shit here, see what works and reiterate. Maybe that wasn't the plan, but... Um, potentially and same thing with Venom what did work what didn't work and let's try and take it up to the next level they'll probably throw some more dollars at it um, I think Venom was about 50 million production budget wow. I'm sure they'll make it 80 yeah. 100 similar to Deadpool Yeah, Deadpool sort of doubled in budget or added another 30 million on top so I think something like that will happen and uh, yeah I, I, I'm excited but it, it, you know there's not much here really to latch on to totally because there's, there's just two ways this can go and we have no idea which it'll be which is the studio realizes this is a really valuable property so they get much more involved than they were in the first one even or they were like these guys who made this the first one did, did something right. right let's maybe give them more freedom let, this them, time. Run. let them go for yeah it. like hopefully they'll just read some fucking reviews mm. and realize that they're the most hated part of this whole formula yep. um yeah anyway fingers crossed I, w- I would love to see like a good venom film because i think the ingredients are there me too Next up. Next up. Um, this one's for you, Georgie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Deadpool Helmer Tim Miller and David Fincher, the greatest of all time, have teamed up to create an animated anthology series aimed at adults mm, titled Love, Death, and Robots for Netflix. Um, the series will be a collection of 18 animated short stories that span the science fiction, fantasy, horror, and comedy genres. It sounds similar to that uh, Blumkamp project that he was releasing. <laughs> his little short Yeah, short his films. short films. Similar yeah. to that. Um, but obviously, this is only animation, which I love. I'm so excited for this. Very keen to see Fincher working with animation. Fincher, I mean, yeah. Fincher, he's really latched on and created a fantastic relationship with Netflix with House of Cards and Mind Hunters. Um, you know, and then he also did that amazing intro to Girl the Dragon Tattoo, mm. which I think every TV show <laughs> rips <laughs> off <laughs> for <laughs> their intros. Mm. Um, you know, he knows how to use, I feel like he's going to, I'm re- well, listen, I'm really keen to see what he does with this yeah. and how, what, what level of involvement is he's going to be. Yeah. So what, have we heard anything on that World War Z2 that he was meant to be doing? Or? Man, that's just been floating around. I don't know the if that's dead been in the water probably canned that- yet or, or not, but. Yeah, I feel like that was, <clears throat> that's just stop started a number of times. Mm. Uh, let's have a look what's going on there. But yeah, what, what do you, what are you thinking about this, Connor? Um, I love the idea. I don't. Th- he's never done anything that's animated, right? No. Um, so I think that that's a really cool opportunity to, um, to see what he's gonna. Well, see what he's gonna do with it. It's a completely new medium. Mm. Um, and then, as we've always said, the the your limitations with, um, animated or kind of, or animation is is kind of limitless, which makes it such a cool medium to work with. Um, so it'll be interesting to see someone who is so. Uh, specific in his filmmaking like you never watch a um a fincher film and and get the sense that he's just you know kind of you know just there's there's definitely like constraints he's an auto. and like yeah there, like it's a very specific thing he'll go into the he'll go into the triple digits for takes of scenes yeah, <laughs> yeah well exactly insane. like you can yeah. say that everything's I mean, he, meticulous with yeah. animation i'm incredibly interested to see it like how like how, if, if he's gonna allow it to kind of um be a little bit more, I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. Weird to and s- wacky, I suppose. It, it's, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see his take on it. Another thing that interests me about this is the sci-fi angle here. Love, Death and Robots. Um, you know, Fincher has only done one sci-fi film, only, you know, uh, Alien 3. And if you asked Mr. Fincher himself, he said, I didn't direct that film. So I'm really keen to see him get involved in... Um, science fiction a little more here we go world war z2 uh in october 2018 producer dd gardner confirmed that the sequel will begin filming in june 2019 fincher directing we'll see about that yeah no promises but yeah i'm really pumped for this do you want a fun fact uh tim miller director of deadpool um, oh yeah, he's involved with this as well. Designed the title sequence of Dragon Tattoo. Oh. No way! So that's how they know each other. Oh. So is Tim? Damn. It might be a, a dumb question. Has Tim Miller done anything animated? 
Uh, yeah, he comes from the animation world. Does he? Uh, Deadpool was his first feature, right? His first directorial yeah. feature, yeah. And then um, he's doing the new so Terminator film. That's why film. it was a dumb question. Um, <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Very encouraging. Very encouraging. This is saying that he did Goon as well. Oh, no, The Goon. All right. So, yeah, he did a, a, a short... Is that um, based on the comic? Proof of concept cool. adaptation that Fincher wanted that. to direct of The Goon, um, starring Clancy Brown and Paul Giamatti, I think. Okay. Um, which unfortunately we will never turn into an actual film, but very cool. The Goon is a very strange comic. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Next up, uh, Dave Batista has joined Denis Villeneuve's Dune. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> so, I mean, we've talked a little bit about him doing Dune. It feels very much in the uh, the vein of Blade Runner 2049. <clears throat> totally. Um, kind of taking as, on a as, classic. As in it's not going to make any money. <laughs> Well, well, fuck, I, I don't even doesn't. care if it does. No, it's I mean, if, if he puts the, the same sense. kind of <laughs> um, authenticity into Dune as he mm. did into Blade Runner, then I'm fucking so down for this. Totally. Mm. Um, yeah, it's cool to see them reuniting. Uh, yeah. He did a fantastic job for the minimal screen time he had in yeah. uh, Blade Runner. He yeah. made a lot of impact in that film. And, and in the short that he starred in yeah. as well. Hopefully mm. he gets a real role in this because he's, he's, I think he's got some stuff to really prove. I think he's better than any of us know yet. Do you know what? This guy's mental, man. Like Dave Bautista is an absolute animal when it comes to just taking life and running the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. He's a full-fledged actor. He's conquered the WWE and he was in an MMA fight earlier this year. Like he's just... He's was a, he really? Yeah. It's he, absolutely incredibly impressive what this guy's been able to do with his He was career. also the first man to climb Everest, I believe. Yep. <laughs> um, Cartwheel up. It's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of bizarre how many like really successful people have come from the WWE world. Like, I mean, if you think John about Cena. John Cena, yeah. The Rock, who is probably if you're if you're talking about like you know someone that's really kind of taken life by the horns. Yeah, it's I mean, by he's kind horns. of the the uh, the prime example. Mm. But um, because you know, I think one reason why is they the personal branding they have to have that so dialed in that I yeah. think that they really think that's one of their top of mind sort of things, you know, fitness and who am I and now, well, how am I different from the other roster of these other wrestlers? Um, Branding is more important than anything in Hollywood. Yeah. Certainly more than acting talent. Most, most well, definitely. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. uh, so evidently he's playing a character that is a really nasty piece of work. He's somebody's brother or something. We don't know anything about Dune. <laughs> yeah. I, I, about have Dune. You, either of you read? No way. God, no. Dude. Read seven books. Um, it's, I mean, in terms Harry of Potter science fiction seven. books, it's, <laughs> there's a reason that it's a classic. Like, it's a really good book. Um, I haven't read any of the supplementary, yeah. um, like, sequels that, that uh, apparently kind of, aren't, well, aren't nearly as good. Um, but this is, this is a movie that I am so psyched Me too. to see on the big screen in terms of, like, just the, the, the scale mm. and, and the kind of, the, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm interested to see Sandworms. I'm interested to see how he's going to do that. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how he's going to do a lot of the action scenes. How do you know that? <laughs> well, I'm a fucking June nerd, number yeah. one. <laughs> uh, Read every book uh, yeah, uh, three one, times, one of, um, despite what I just said. One of my favorite bands growing up was uh, a hardcore <laughs> band called Shea Halud. Cool. Uh, oh, gotcha. Uh, but yeah, I'm totally with you, man. The spectacle here. Um, have you guys seen Jadorowski's June? The documentary? documentary? No. I've, I've heard a lot about it. I've though. heard it's terrible. Don't listen to that, man. <laughs> He's just drinking too much. <laughs> uh, it is such a cool movie and it's just wets your whistle for... Is that the right term? I a, bit don't of, know. a bit of Dune um, content. Uh, yeah, it is. It's uh, a, I for suppose. this upcoming June. Mm. Yeah. Ugh, I can't wait for it. When is Sick. this coming out? I'm saying 2020 probably... Mm. The sooner the better. Denny Villeneuve, when are you going to arrive on our screens? Come on. <laughs> Here, give me a minute. IMDb, this guy always goes to. Just, really? Uh, well, nothing I came up on Wiki. I haven't used uh, Nothing came up on Wiki. Yours. When have I ever used? When have I ever used? Always. Uh, They're on it right now. Uh, well, that was a one-off. <laughs> You've just chosen this scenario and extrapolated it for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia, Del Denny Villeneuve. <laughs> This is tough, man. Oh, bring okay, you the there's content. There's no release date. There's no release date. Okay, <laughs> that was worth to it. be decided. So there you go. Come uh, on, Denny. Let's get her done. Let's do it. 
Get it. Yeah, rush it out. Come on. Yeah. <sighs> now we got something else. Oh, what time is it? It's trailer time. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Well, first of all, we have Captain Marvel, uh, the new trailer. Um, came out today. Came out today. Just Not- came out. Not in the vein of the other two trailers, which the first two trailers seemed very kind of operatic. Um, Quite serious. Yeah, like kind of like, oh, like this is like Captain Marvel. How cool is this? Especially that second one, I feel. Yeah, um, and which I love. Like I'm, I'm so on board with that. I, I think it's really cool. Um, this one seemed to be far more kind of about the dialogue saying, hey, guys, we're still Marvel. We're still cheeky. Marvel-y. We're very... You know, this is still the the what you're expecting. So, um, which again, I'm 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 okay with that. I thought this is a really weak trailer. I'm um, the last two Captain Marvel trailers have got me a little bit worried. Uh, the, I don't know. Some the last two was in this and the last one. Yeah, so there's been three trailers right now. Mm, yeah. The first one really impressed me. It had a fantastic score and it really just roped me in. And I feel like the last two, for whatever reason, have not captured me. And I'm really like the dialogue between Nick Fury and Captain Marvel in this. I don't know. It just doesn't seem to really be like, oh yeah, these guys are riffing off each other and they're bouncing back and forth. Very limited footage here. So I, I'm not going to judge the whole movie on this, but as a trailer, I'm not totally impressed. It's definitely a step down. Like, like I said, the, the first and second one were very operatic and big. So I think it's going to feel naturally like a bit of a, um, not whiplash per se, but certainly you're going to feel like it's slowing down. You're kind of, it's going to feel less spectacular than the first two. Um, I by far enjoyed the second one more than the first. This is funny. I like this one more than the other two by a lot. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is George. How is this that? Is just so you enjoyed the first one the most. I enjoyed yeah. the second one the most. And you've enjoyed the third one the most. Yeah, like conversely to you, George, this is the first time I haven't been worried about Captain Marvel. I'm like, nice. oh, it's cool. This is a Marvel movie. It looks nice. like they're, they're the same degree of uh, control that they always do. I hate um, that shot where she's on the train and she's blasting. Mm. They've used that every trailer. Mm. I just think that looks terrible. Didn't even register um, it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of worried about Captain Marvel. Yeah. Well, That's right. Uh, it might be just getting to that point where you have to worry about every Marvel movie. I'm, but because, I'm not worried about Endgame. Well, I mean, well... I think you should be. I should be, but I'm not. 2018 was the beginning of the end for I think Marvel, we, I as think we've, we've established. I well, think we've, um, here. Yeah. DCEU has taken over. <laughs> I, I think we've been lulled into a false sense of security because Marvel was able to pull off this kind of impossible feat with Infinity War where we just think, oh, they're invincible. They will be good forever. No, Connor, and, I'm having flashbacks to Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, every dog has its day. Every dog has its day. When Pixar was at the height of their game, they, it wasn't even possible to conceive of a time where Pixar wasn't like yeah. when something came out from Pixar that you weren't just like, this is the best thing ever. And then Brave happened. Then fucking <laughs> Brave and Cars happened. Yeah, you skip right over Cars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but Cars, I feel like they had a very, they had the sort of, it had a different sort of niche. It was directly going for sort of. I think it was the beginning of the end. Under five. Cars, cars is all right. Because that, nah, that was, nah, that was nah, a cars movie. Cars 2 was their first bad movie. Yeah. But I think Cars 1 was a movie that was far more um, kind of marketed towards and built for kids yeah. and merchandising. And that's yes. ironically where they made their most money. Yeah. And I think that, that was, that's where, where Pixar lost its magic. That's where the board goes, more of this, please. Yes. <laughs> yep. This is easily merchandisable. And this is, yeah. you know, this has made lots of money. Let's fucking, let's keep on this. Um, yeah, man. Anyway. I hope that doesn't happen. But Captain Marvel... I'm not convinced. And my boy Jude Law's in this. That always rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> always. So I, yeah. <laughs> you and like certain actors, like I, if I don't like an actor, there's a very specific reason I don't like that actor. You have the weirdest reasons I for not liking it. Like Mark Strong. I'm weird. He's there are too prolific. Reasons for it. Oh, fucking no, sorry. He's overexposed. The man is, the man, <laughs> this is what it, <laughs> you, No, no. no prolific is different to overexposed. Oh, what do you mean overexposed? His head's overexposed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, is this like a boldest thing? <laughs> oh <Maybe>. shit! <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I, I, I. So why why did you like this on the best? That really interests me. I, I felt so deflated after this trailer. I've been in the sun all day. I'm a bit tired. I'm, I'm just a bit confused. Yeah. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I I thought Captain Marvel like it gave a little more shape to the the story going on here. Captain Marvel had a little more character than I thought we've seen before. Um, it really highlighted the fact that there's like a buddy movie between Marvel and, and, and Fury, which is cool. Um, yeah. 
I yeah, I don't know. I think there's a bit more finished effects in it and stuff. Uh, I don't know. And I guess I've just been hearing a bit more about this movie. I like the idea because there's been a lot of mystery around who um, who Jude Law is actually playing, um, whether it is actually Marvel or um, now people are thinking he might actually be Yon Rog, <laughs> the um, the the villain of of the original Captain Marvel. Um, God, that would be a doozy, bro. If they go for Yon Rog. I'm gonna lose my mind. Holy shit! If I, if, I never thought I'd get to see in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yon Rog on Rock. the big screen. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about Yon Rog, but I like. I, I think it seems fairly clear. Like, surely Jude Law is gonna be the villain in this film because well, yeah, Mendo and, and the Skrulls feel like more henchmen yeah. things or whatever. They barely in this in these scenes. They're henchmen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just liked it. It worked for me. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. Well, next in our little list is uh, Polar. The Mads Mickelson. Mads. Uh, Which one was this Comic one? book. Yeah. <laughs> polar so and this Arctic. Is, this They're is the so weird thing. Like, there's two Mads Mickelson's trailer out this week. One is Polar, one is Arctic. They've both got an ice Two very theme. different films. Um, the polar theme. is the one which is like the John Wick with more color. Yeah. Um, which is probably the best way I can describe this film. It's pretty much John Wick. Did you guys, did this guy remind you, is this Scusi Bissa? Is that one? <laughs> Did this George remind you guys, George is having a stroke. Guys, guys of Kick-Ass or even that Wanted movie from the noughties. Like it had a very noughties kind of vibe. Do you know it. what it reminded me of is Smoking Aces. Okay. Yeah. It's, Which I'm not sure if that's reason, a good or bad thing. For like some reason, it just reminded me like this could have come, this, to me, this trailer looked like it could have come out. And this isn't a bad thing. I wouldn't say no. This is this, this is could have come out. This is like This could have come out early 10 2000s. years ago. 2009. Yeah. yeah. 2007. It very much feels like that kind of film. 2011. It, um... 2010. I, after watching the trailer, I had, a, I had a quick look at the director. It said, uh, what's his name? Compl- complicated name. Um, is, a, is a Swedish, I think, director and drummer. And I was like, I'd buy that. Yeah. Because this trailer it seemed very, uh, I don't know, like syncopated, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I really like this trailer. This yeah, looks awesome. Too. Based on a graphic novel I've never heard of, whatever. Mads Mikkelsen needs to be done better by the, the movie industry. Seriously. You didn't like so Rogue One? fucking talented. I did not like Rogue One. You didn't like him in Rogue One, bro. I did not like him in Doctor Strange. I thought they cut out 90% of what his performance must have been because there's nothing there. Um, he has such potential to be a great yeah, villain, you know? Um, and yeah. I, I just love that this is the return of one eye um, in modern day setting. It's like, he's like, what did somebody say on social? He's kind of like John Wick with uh, Solid Snake from uh, <laughs> Metal yeah. Gear Solid. Yeah. Uh, I think they're embracing the comic book graphic novel aspect to add a nice oh, yeah. it looked yes, like a lot level. of kind of split panels and stuff mm. on screen. I don't know if that was just editing for the trailer or whatnot but mm. so I'm just yeah, I'm, cool. I'm starting to notice a trend with Mads Mikkelsen which is that they're just fucking up his eye every time oh my god <laughs> well because in uh, Valhalla he, he's well his character is one eye um, in uh, Casino Royale Casino Royale he's got the he bleeding bleeds, eye bleeds mm. from his eye Le Chiffre Le Chiffre that's a pretty cool niche yeah I, I play really good one-eyed villains. <laughs> <laughs> On his CV. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if like three three characters makes a trend, but <laughs> he's basically the next Sean Bean, yeah, yeah. except for fung except eyes. For eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we move? Should we it's move a swiftly? Weird thing to notice. <laughs> should we move swiftly into the Arctic? next? Yeah. Which is another Mads Mikkelsen film, survival film, kind of like The Grey. Mm. Um. I mean, there's not much to talk about in in terms of this trailer um, because survival films, almost by necessity, are very minimalist. Mm. Um, I I feel like I know what this film will be. It will be you know two hours of me watching a screen going, oh, <laughs> come on, damn, ah. Oh, the trailer shucks. alone was just like bad thing after bad yeah. thing, like almost comically bad. That's like that's <laughs> yeah. what survival films are. Yeah, it's like a bunch along, of really just shitty things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like, what? I'm like, is this a comedy? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that a mighty boosh edge or something? Like, <laughs> uh, I don't it's know. um, it's one of those things where you're just like, it's just gonna be shitty thing after shitty thing happening to this guy. But I think the the immediately something that stood out about this trailer was this is a beautifully shot film. It looks really, really yeah. nicely put together. But again, they usually are. Was that a real bear? It looked like it, it. looked like a real bear. <laughs> Maybe I've, but just, there like, maybe I've just been scarred by Lost, which had like a stuffed animal for a polar bear. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cotton wool bear. Yeah, mm. no, it looked like at least some of the cutscenes were definitely a real bear. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's Arctic. Um, we also had Punisher season two trailer. Um, 
I was hype, kind hype, of hype. a bit meh about the trailer, but very excited for Punisher 2. Very intense uh, sound design. I love yeah. this. I really love this. Sometimes that whole, like this has no footage from this TV series in it. Uh, and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't work. But in this case, it really yeah. did. Mm. It was very much like the um, the trailer for Daredevil. Daredevil. Mm. Yeah. And they're sort of spinning around those two characters, yeah. Punisher. A, and what's the other guy's is name? Is that a character that we've seen before? Yeah, he was the main bad <laughs> guy. the villain from the first He's season. I, I genuinely just cannot remember the Punisher. Okay, can we talk about Jigsaw for a moment? And how badly they've fucked up. The mask looks terrible. Well, the mask, his face, he looks fine. Like, his face was shredded at the end yeah. of that. Look up a picture of what Jigsaw yeah. is meant to look yeah, like and what he looked like right. in the last film. Yeah, but don't you think go. that was almost like, I think, I think they will, for me, it was almost like that was reminding you of season one. I don't think that's how he's going to be appearing in season oh, two. Oh, that's is. right. Really? No. Yeah, that, that's what he looks like in the scene. Yeah, there's, there's set photos. Really? Yeah, he just, he's barely scarred at all. Like he's meant to look yeah, he was like fucked. a mon. Yeah, he got torn apart. He's meant to look like an absolute monster. So I'm looking at the really? photo of yeah, him. That's what in he looks the- like. It's like it's so weird for a, 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 like the the Netflix Marvel series and especially Punisher are so extreme. You know, with like a fucking triple. Well, this X. is the one to go for. It. Yeah, and it's so like this yeah, is not. Why didn't they? Yeah, that's. I mean, I don't understand how that suddenly turned into what. <laughs> I've just, I've clearly just not. And, and in the trailer, he's like, I'm a hideous monster now. <laughs> and it's like, like, no, you still look like Ben, fucking whatever his name is. That's okay. That's not acceptable. That's got it. I'm sorry. There's <laughs> on, on uh, Instagram or no, Twitter, there's a, a moving trailer of like his progression, but it's so fast. It's really disconcerting. I don't like it. <laughs> we'll what see. The we'll see. What the fuck is that? We'll see what who, happens here. Who, who made this and thought this is a good idea to put on social media? <laughs> fuck Netflix. You, whoever you are. Netflix. Um, so this is one of the last uh, one of the last Netflix Marvel series we're going to get, undoubtedly. Surely. Yeah. Um, there's just going to be this and Jessica Jones season three, I assume. I'm pumped for this. Yeah. Oh no, me too. Actually, after all my like little rant there, um, yeah. love the first season. Um, possibly still a little over long as these things are, but uh, less so than the others. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of sad that that we're losing Marvel. Um, Netflix. I really hope they hold on to the actors uh, and the characters. And then move it on to... Yeah, we've talked about what we'd like to see out of this. Um, yeah. And which means we'll inevitably be wrong. Uh. We've been wrong pretty much every step of the way. Yeah. Um, Analysis. And now it's uh, Watchmen, sort of. Uh, we got <laughs> a very seconds. short <laughs> clip of Watchmen during the HBO... Um, this is what we're you know releasing this year. Um, also got to see some Game of Thrones, um, but... Um, not too much to talk to, but it, it's just cool that this is actually happening. So we see um, Jeremy Irons as an older Aussie Ozymandias, yeah. uh, who with brilliant, brilliant casting, so much better than Matthew Good from the film, who is one of the big weak links in that. Um, and we also see uh, we get a look at uh, a Rorschach character, yeah. um, who of an course should or... be dead at this point uh, in the Maybe timeline. A son, um, yeah, it's probably just someone picking up the mantle, I guess. Didn't didn't. Like comparatively to the the Snyder film, didn't like the look at all of, of no. that character. It's but hard to compare with that look though, because it was so. I mean, it was just so good. It's perfect. It was yeah. right off the page. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I'm I'm really keen for this I'm series. I'm really um, keen. Our old mates, uh, Atticus. Yeah. Uh, and and, Tre- uh, and, and Reznor Tre- are on this. Yeah, which, gives me uh, so much confidence, man. Yeah. And to everything, the leftovers. You know, the the one thing that has been worrying me about this is um our friend. What the fuck is his name? Prometheus. Damon Lindelof. Damon Lindelof. Damon, Damon Lindelof. <laughs> um, he's worried me a little bit. But everything, the leftovers, has just completely wiped out everyone's um concerns concerns with uh, Watchmen. So, mm. damn, I'm pumped. Mm. And I can't believe it's coming out this year. Hell yeah. On HBO. Yeah. Well, there we have it, guys. Weekly show all wrapped up. We're not going to do a question of the week because we're going to be running down the most anticipated films of 2019. So definitely go check that out and follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, YouTube. Twitter. Are we on Twitter? No. (laughs) You can look for us. (laughs) Somebody else might take it. Who knows? Uh, But we'll be back next week. Back to normal with uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3 review. How to Train Your Dragon. The, yeah. the, the Hidden Realm. What's that movie called? The Hidden World? The Dragon Realm. Place. <laughs> yeah. Toothless. I'm the interested movie. to see what you guys think. Fallen Kingdom. Because I, I, I watched it because we were meant to be doing it this week. <laughs> <laughs> we 
or life gets in the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Benny. And I'll see you next week, Connor. Bye. I'll see you next week, Benny. Bye. Bye. Bye.